Book 1. War and Peace in the Aetris System A millennia ago, an empire that reigned over much of the galaxy suddenly and inexplicably collapsed. Theories abound as to reason for its demise, but none are supported by evidence. When this ancient civilization died, the history of its ascendants, achievements, and ultimate downfall died with it. However, what we can glean from miscellaneous sources, some 2,000 years after the catastrophe, indicates that entire solar systems became wastelands. Billions died, their stories never to be told, and those that remained reverted to barbarism, and the empire's monuments and less tangible triumphs were left to rot. In the far corner of the galaxy, in Aldous system, two races survived on two separate planets. Quietly orbiting their common sun, both groups were quite certain that they were unique and alone, yet they shared a common bond, the Aldar. Who are the Aldair? Of the numerous gods in the cosmic pantheon, only the Aldair have so powerfully affected the fate of the galaxy. Their story is told in their own words, comprising of the first 300 books in a Torumen, a collection of 4,000 written in the divine beings at a specific, if often paradoxical, set of directions for the races that they themselves begat. Their story is complex and contradictory, nevertheless, it is possible to gleam a summary of their birth, ancestry, and ultimate demise. These final books of the Torumen are believed to have been written some 2,500 years prior to the current situation between the Malus and the Elysians. The Torumen. The Torumen is significantly shaped by both cultures of the Malus and Elysians. Sculpture is used not merely for spiritual inspiration or in secateur, rather as a divine blueprint for which both races believe they can discern the actions that will allow them to triumph over any and all manner of trouble and adversity. Perhaps now, more than ever, both sides are consulting the scriptures as they attempt to determine the course of action that will grant them victory. The scriptures have both generated and perpetuated the current hostilities between the Malus and Elysians both of whom believe that they are doing the will of the Aldair. In the scripture below, we will examine those, only those books and verses that have played an integral part in the current conflict. Bear in mind that excerpts included here only represent a fraction of the complete scriptures, over 4,000 books in all. The sections of scriptures that are of greatest significance during the current conflict are derived from five books. The Endless Shadow, Book 843, Prophecies Important, Book 1113, Admonitions, Book 3541, and Origin of Spirits, Book 3647, and The Shade of Dawn, Book 3999. The excerpts presented below, as well as the interpretations given by both races, have been arranged chronologically, so as to provide the context for the present struggle. From Book 843, The Endless Shadow, during roughly the same early period in both cultures of the Malus and Elysians, experienced a significant disruption in their societal and political structures. Perhaps the scriptural verse cited below was discovered simultaneously by both races, for the words seem to have been a primary cause for the restructuring of both societies. We who have created you govern you. We watch earnestly through your every triumph, your every mistake. Only rarely do we intervene. Such is our relationship with you, observer and the observed. Malice. In the year 424, during the era known as the Old Dark, a period of intense fighting ended with the establishment of the Malice clan system, in which each clan is responsible for a particular aspect in society. Prior to the establishment of the clan system, individual families vied for power the results were infallibly bloody, and peace was short-lived. The clans absorbed existing families and opposed the fragile structure of chaotic squabbling. No words have come down from us at this time, but the image reproduced below shows territorial divisions after the establishment of the clan system on Malice.
Elysians. During the same, peri same periods, the Elysians were at the height of the period of cultural and intellectual prosperity. This verse of the Aldair scripture had a profound influence on Elysian thought. Indeed, in their own tongue, Elysian meant the observed. Self-censorship in the arts grew as fear of the Aldair's disapproval took root in the Elysian mind. Prior to adopting the Elysian name, Philosophical theses abound with the arrogant references of the greatness of the elect. We, the elect, are solely worthy to inherit the cosmos. There is no intelligence but our intelligence. Following the strict interpretation of the Aldar scripture, particularly the above quoted verse, the tone changes dramatically. We who are the mere shadow of the Aldar humbly submit our intelligence. Feeble though it may be, before them, we, the observed, sit in judgment of the superior wisdom. From Book 3541, Abdomations. Abdomations, from which the following verse is taken, is a strange compilation of mystical guidance and practical abdomations. The latter indicates guideline regarding dietary restrictions, marriage rights, manners, mode of dress and even appropriate entertainments. Of the former mystical guidance, the following verse has great impact on the evolution of the current war. Verse 3 Thus do we say, and let it echo from the star, that the law is the way to victory. Child, what is law? That which leads to victory. Child, what is victory? To live in accordance with the law. Malice Malice interpret this verse to mean the laws of the malice, that is, secular laws. It was first employed by the clan hierarchy as a means to legitimise opposition to despotic order on the unruly citizens of malice. The law, as it appears in the scripture, was soon defined as anything uttered by various clan leaders. The secular logic of the verse suited the ones of the upstart chiefs, who announced that any changes in the laws would be consequently reflected in the divine law. Any radical changes or abuses of power were then simply defined as being part of the law, and therefore justifiable. This conscripulous form of lawmaking frequently led to savage abuse, such as the infamous Great Fading, in which millions of clanless malice were convicted of treason and summoned to execution. Elysians. The particular translation of a single word highlights a fundamental cultural difference between Malus and Elysia, and may be responsible for current tensions between the two races. Whereas the Malus interpreted the term victory to mean conquest over oneself and others, the Elysians, who lacked such an aggressive mindset, took the term to mean unity or friendship. Thus, this passage was critical in the Elysians' efforts to determine if there were other intelligent life forms existing in the system. Prior to contact with the Malice, victory appears frequently in the speeches of the Elysian political leaders, including the famous lecturer of the people, the great Oratarker, Warthrock. Quote, My people, among us and within us, there dwells an insatiable loneliness. To our philosophers, artists, orators, and millions of others, nameless, who have enriched our lives, we owe gratitude. But alone, amongst even ourselves, our achievements ring hollow. We learn from the scripture, child, what is law? That which leads to us to friendship, many people. It is time to take these precious words to heart. It is time to fulfill the scripture. It is time to befriend the cosmos. Know that this is our destiny of the Elysians. Only three weeks after the speech, the Elysian government set in motion a program of technological development that would, in only two years, 
enable them to dispatch unmanned satellites to the far reaches of space. The satellites were equipped with large refractories and marked with sacred Elysian's symbols, and they would act as beacons proclaiming the existence of the Elysians to the cosmos. From Book 1113, Prophecies and Portions Early in the morning, during the first nights of the Shing Haspara, the Malice Holy Day, high atop Malice Observatory in Mount Kirli, the astronomers detected the first signs of a new unidentified body in the heavens. It would change the course of the entire system. The Malice age-old conviction that no other life forms existed in the cosmos had never been in question. Their gods, the Aldair, at the height of their power were drawn into a war with a powerful enemy. Eventually, the Aldair were betrayed in a great battle and were defeated. The great betrayer was only known as a symbol in the Toro Min. The Elisa 1 satellite contained a recorded greeting from the people of Elysia and a pronouncement that they would announce themselves by lighting up the night sky. Prophecies of Importance was written by an unknown Aldair during the decline of that divine race. Pessimistic in tone and numerous divinations were the first indication that the Aldair's time had passed. Divination 1001 All living creatures wake to the light of the sun. When there are two suns, does that increase awareness? Shadow upon shadow, light negates light. Malice The Malice had long been divided over the significance of the enigmatic prophecy and two sons had been interpreted in every sublime and ridiculous way imaginable. The passage had since become synonymous with the dual rise, as the sun rose prominently over a heavily populated continent, the appearance of the sky of the unmanned and unarmed Elysian satellite gave the appearance of two suns appearing simultaneously. Its orbit decaying and the satellite at last burnt through the atmosphere and crashed to the planet's surface. What was recovered from the wreckage shocked the entire populace. Emblazoned with the wreckage was the symbol of the Turo Min, the symbol of the Great Betrayer, who had caused the downfall of their gods. The satellite also contained an encrypted message that, once deciphered, was immediately revealed by the Malice Holy Men to be the previously incomplete Turo Min sculpture. Observer to observe. The striking hand gathers the flame. The crushing hand ignites the path. Victory is the light. The threat was obvious. The great evil was returning to destroy them, as it has the Aldair. The Malice prepared for war. The cataclysm and confrontation of the Great Betrayer was imminent. Elysia. The logical Elysians did not place much importance on prophecies and portents, though some religious figures, usually on the fringes of society, claimed to have successfully interpreted many of the divinations. The Elysian orthodoxy generally frowns upon such unfounded speculation. Before burning up in the atmosphere, Elysia 1 had transmitted enough information back to its home planet to convince the Elysians that there was indeed intelligent life on Malice. The lack of response confused them and finally convinced the Elysians that the civilization on Malice were still in its infancy. From Book 1113, Prophecies Importance There was much turmoil on Malice following this unexpected encounter with their ancient enemies. Clans formed and collapsed, splintered and united. There was no consensus on how to prepare for the imminent doom. But no one disputed the inevitability of war. A new breed of clan leader emerged, one that took the role of saviour, the only hope in these dire times. Some were more powerful and charismatic enough to combine many clans under their leadership, and an apocalyptic fever swept across the planet. At the same time, a new and powerful religious caste, calling them themselves the Devout of Toro Min, appeared on the frenzied scene. The Devout were adept at providing profound interpretations of the scriptures, Clan leaders began to associate themselves with the Devouts in the hopes that an interpreted scripture may lend them some advantage in the power struggle. The Devout did not only become mouthpieces for the words of God, but also spokesmen for their preferred clans. Divination 2010 When war fails, counsel peace.
the converse is also true. Those who balk at the word may bristle at the blade. These are fears and rhymes of life. Malice. When the presence of the alien intelligence in the galaxy could no longer be denied, the malice hierarchy formed an oversky authority, a hastily assembled board of military leaders and clan representatives. The Oversky Authority announced its militaristic intentions and focused Malice's energies and resources on the construction of a new spaceport, a massive space station that would serve as a command centre for the deployment of Malice's forces. Elysia. During the period of the Oversky Authority, the Elysians remained cautiously optimistic despite the fact that many of the follow-up satellites they had dispatched into Malice space had vanished. Their newest efforts would be an ambassadorial mission, and among the ships that were sent to perform the peacemaking tasks was the Taranea. A long voyage still stood between them and Malice though. From Book 843, the Endless Shadow. Verse 1. Brother, brother, I am consumed by fire. I am as a falling star. Malice. In the early mornings of the second Haspra, a morning that would be later described by the Malice devout Paura as dung dark and dry as death, the Oversky Authority activated the spaceport. The Night Sky Cult had gained ruling status and an intense re-education program had buried any hopes of diplomacy. Most clans gathered behind the Night Sky Clan. Their military might and economical advantage presented them with the best chance to defeat the Great Betrayer. From Book 3999, Shades of Dawn. The Malice spaceport was eerily renamed Night Home by the Night Sky Clan. It was constructed to serve as a launching pad for military missions. All clans mounted extensive military build-up, and rumours of sinister new weapons advances soon found their way to the common people. Millions of would-be soldiers signed up, pledges to fight until the incoming enemy was subdued. The coming war would be everyone's war. Verse 20. Do not be misled by those who would deny your true inheritance. Gaze upon the night sky. Do you see discord there? It is not for you to see. Only when blood mixes with blood do the wonders of the cosmos reveal themselves. Malice. Following the dismantling of the Oversky Authority, a great battle erupted between the various clans on Malice. Sides were chosen based on one fact and one fact alone. Did the Elysians present a threat to the very existence of Malice? The violent imagery of this scriptural verse appealed to the elements of the Malice society which believed that in order to avoid ruin, a cataclysmic war must be played out against the invading Elysians. Three years of internal chaos and bloodshed dubbed the Kaming led to the appointment of the first Exarch of Malice, a member of the dominant and domineering Night Sky Cult, which took its name from this verse. The Night Sky Cult, which was still the governing clan on Malice, was supported by a vast majority of Malice's citizens. The Exarch was looked upon as the ultimate saviour of Malice. Elysia the Elysians' take on this passage is typically pacifistic, cited frequently by those supporting the manned mission to Malice. Verse 20 substantiated the Elysians' belief that unity must be sought at any cost. Only when blood mixes with blood do the wonders of the cosmos reveal themselves. For the Elysians, this was nothing less than scriptural proof that the secrets of Aldera could only be attained by seeking out their cosmic brothers. From Book 3541, Abdomations. Night Sky, a colossal Malice spaceport, orbits menacingly around its dark home planet, while devotes recruit eager would-be martyrs from across the land. The Malice preparations for war were rapid and impressive. Advances in armaments and other technologies were announced daily, 
and military leaders hastily assembled a highly effective regiments of devoted soldiers. It was with an enormous sense of duty that the Malas prepared to face the great betrayer. Verse 210 Lose your heart to the thoughts of war and nothing else. Long for war and wed yourself to dreams of battle. Malice. The recitation of the above verse by hundreds of thousands of Malice troops prior to entering battle has been for those who have borne witness to the event an awesome experience. The Malice war machine, which until fairly recently hardly existed, has grown into a formidable military structure. The current war is nothing less than fulfilment of the thousands of years of prophecy guided by the Aldea, the Malus are prepared to reclaim the galaxy as their own. Clans, however, are proudly and statutorily independent, while a common cause suffice to maintain a fragile peace on the home planet. Elysia. Many Elysian heroes are philosophers and explorers, reflecting the people's passion for thought. They hold tenaciously to ideas, a disposition which in the past had led into several intonation wars. Until recently, the modern Elysian called these hostilities with a sense of shame. Today, however, the Elysian society is a war footing, and memories of the past have been given a new life. Elysians are seeking to return to their more combative, some would say noble, past, and they point to verse 210 as evidence of the necessity of war. From Book 3647, Origin of Spirits. Theologians on both sides are puzzling over the possible meaning of divination 1200, Christ is the spectre of an as yet unknown force in the cosmos. The writer's tone. Fearful in the face of an undefinable threat, heralds the appearance of a new author, perhaps a sage Aldair Elder. There is a fatalism in this section of the scriptures that stands in marked contrast to the self-assuredness that is so apparent in earlier verses. Divination 1200 I am tormented by dreams of our death, and grieve at what is to come. For in dreams I have seen the heavens flutter, and the stars drop from the sky. In my dreams, creation ceases without a sound. I have seen the destruction of the way. Malice. For centuries, Divination 1200 was closely guarded by the Sejar, a semi-independent cabal of the devout, whose aims were twofold, to study the infamous verse, and, fearing that such divine uncertainty would demoralize the Malice citizenry, prevent it from becoming public knowledge. But... With the advent of the Elysian War, the Exarch has commanded that the divination be divulged to the public. The Sedge Jahar have emerged from obscurity, its members have elevated to a godlike status, and verses reinterpreted to suit the whims of the Malice military regime. The Malice hierarchy, including the devout of the Night Sky Clan, have adopted a position which was, until recently, a frightful heresy. The destruction of the way admits the possibility that Malice can now fulfill their destiny as the rightful inheritors of the divine rule in the cosmos. Though this idea was nothing new in Malice religious thought, the prophecy in Divination 1200 lacked historical precedence until the start of the war. Now, the Malice believed that with the destruction of the allegiance, they would return to a paradisiacal period in galactic history, when only divine beings the Malice now among them dwelled in the cosmos, Elysia. Typically, the Elysians have taken a considerably more humble approach in their interpretation of Divination 1200. Mystics among the Elysian priesthood have determined that the passage is essentially a divine appeal for mortal hell that has transcended time and space. There is both the burden and the privilege of the Elysians to reopen the way so that Aldair may once again return to its former glory.